Today's episode of Salem and Crystal was brought to you by Fuck Yeah! Where do I begin at how awesome this episode was? By the way, you'll notice that I switched to my camera because my darling laptop after... How long have I had you? Since college. I think eight years? Yes. I've had this laptop for eight years and she's on her last legs. So hopefully soon after I move to Australia with my husband I can... Uh, get a new laptop. I gotta save my money for Australia first. Um, but hopefully soon afterwards I can get a new laptop, new computer, and make better videos for you guys. We might be starting a Kickstarter to try to get some better equipment to make better videos for you guys now that we're almost up to 50,000 subscribers, so we gotta look shiny for you guys. Let us know if you're interested in a Kickstarter. Like, it, it could really help us. Um, get better equipment for you guys because uh, I can't really do anything too fancy on my laptop anymore It'll overheat it'll shut down Sometimes when I'm working on posters for art tables It will shut down on me and I haven't saved and I just want to flip the damn thing and call it quits But I can't because it's all I have Felt like I was in darkness for like a good two weeks when this baby wasn't working, but I got to work and It's on its last leg. She's been good to me for eight years so, uh, gotta find a way to get a new, new laptop. Anyway, I think I'll start with the pacing for episode, where are we on? Five now? Episode five of Salem and Crystal? By the way, fuck you for making me wait three weeks. I don't care if you want to go with a pattern for like, oh, we want to release episodes for every, you know, first, third, and fifth Saturday. No, not, I think like, they want to release new episodes on the first and third Saturdays of each month, so all I can say is fuck you. Stop making me wait. And so far it's almost kind of not worth the two weeks to wait because the animation quality is just not that impressive. The colors are a little bleh and uh, the animation tends to get a little warpish here and there, so stop. Stop it. Not making me wait if you're gonna keep giving us this stuff. I mean, it's shiny here and there. Like, did you see the attack that Mars did in this episode? You just say evil spirits, and it's like fire everywhere. It's like, damn, girl. So when it comes to the special effects and the transformations and such, and the the overpowered opening sequence it has, it's just wow. But for every other scene, like I said in the last two vlogs I've done. Every other scene, they don't give it the attention it deserves. But this episode, the animation wasn't too bad. It's actually a lot better compared to the other episodes. I don't think there's anything wrong uh, with this episode in particular. I just might want to watch it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Like I always do for the other episodes. Might memorize each line. But I think the major issue I have with this episode is pacing. Pacing. They're trying so hard to shove in so much exposition for this character when it's not necessary. It's as if they realize that they have to get rid of the Anne and Alan arc from Salem and R when, it come, when they're going to do the Dead Moon Family segment. By the way, they made an announcement that they're going to continue Salem and Crystal to the Black Moon Family. Cue the music! No, I'm not happy. Just because it has my favorite villain of all. I'm in that season. I'm, I'm not excited. Diamond Senpai notice me! <laughs> I know I'm getting off topic, but I told Megan that if Chris Patton never voiced uh, Prince Diamond, I would lose it. Because Chris Patton has like the ultimate be shown in voice. He like voices a lot of dreamy characters in anime, and he says himself that he is typecasted. So if he is casted as Diamond for the Salem Moon Crystal arc, or for the redubbing itself. Look out, world! I might implode. Cause that's that's too much. <laughs> Todd Havercorn as Jedi is bad enough, but Chris Patton as Diamond, I'm gonna die. <laughs> that's too much. Okay, moving on. Back back on topic. Um, what I mean is, what by the whole Anna and Alan thing, because they had an episode where they do go back on Makoto's uh, past about how she was in love with a senpai and she wanted him to notice her, <laughs> but it didn't happen. So that's like her backstory is like she is just a little wavery with love and she's always reminded of the senpai that never loved her. Uh, 
But they had to shove that in there in this episode. It's like two seconds of exposition. Senpai, notice me. Hey, I got a girlfriend now. <laughs> Bye. Dang guns fashion. That, that's the book I used. Make it work. But yeah, that, just, that really felt forced. Two seconds of exposition of her past and she said, Oh, the world is bleak. Senpai never noticed me, so love is just useless. That's not like every teenager thinks. It's, it's like, I never really got into that, but it's like if that one person doesn't notice you, you might as well give up on life. Don't give up on life, guys, because there is a lot more to life than Senpai noticing you. Just saying. There's a whole world for you to explore. You can get a career. It's a lot of fun. Life is a lot of fun. Just get out there and explore, do whatever the hell you want, and maybe you'll find a senpai to notice you. It's all about waiting and finding Mr. Right Senpai. I found my senpai. <laughs> I found my I found my senpai. And he notices me every day. God, I'm a love sex school girl. So the pacing was really bad in this episode. I'm hoping with the 26 episodes we were promised for this series that they're gonna slow down and I really do believe they're gonna slow down from here because I think it takes a while to get to Sailor Venus so hopefully they're gonna because that's almost the ending of the Sailor Moon first arc for the mangas when they find Sailor Venus in the anime they had a few more episodes but it was coming to an end when Sailor Venus came into the scene so hopefully they're gonna slow down, take their time, and maybe fill in, put in a few filler episodes. Cause I don't want like 12 episodes of exposition of the first arc. Where was the 13? Like 13 episodes of the first arc, and then 13 episodes of the Black Moon Family arc. So if they're gonna just shove it into the 26 episodes, I don't want that. I do not want a Dragon Ball Kai. I don't want it. Your planet will explode in five episodes, more like five seconds according to Dragon Ball Kai. Yeah. Characters! Mokoto is a breath of fresh air because Usagi's a great character, she's got a great personality. Ami and Rei, they have just become so boring. So goddamn boring. They just need a little bit more personality. Like we got like one bit of personality with Rei when she says, I hate men. Bad news for Jedi. But that's it. It's like she, Ray's fine and sophisticated. She's misunderstood. I'm so misunderstood. And she hates men. But she's still kind of boring. And Ami. She's the smart one. But I like Makoto. Like, she comes off as a tough girl. People are scared of her. But when you compliment her, on her cooking and how pretty she would be in a dress. She's just like, maybe. Huh? You really think so? Guys, you're embarrassing me. It's like, you are adorable, Makoto. I like you. I like you. Kind of reminds me of me a little bit before I met my husband. Like, I didn't give a crap about anything, about fashion, about how I presented myself. Because I really thought a long time ago that I wasn't pretty. That I would never find a guy that would take me seriously and keep my attention to them. Because I just didn't care about anything. Because I really thought I wasn't pretty enough to get, a, to get a decent guy. And then the love of my life comes into my life and he twirls me around. He says, you are gorgeous. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because of him, I'm a girly girl that loves shoes and makeup. It's your fault, honey! I ain't getting so off track in this episode. Anyways! I also love Tuxedo Mask in this episode. Because there's danger in the corner, and he's just like... Shit's going down. She looks up at him, she's just like... You know where I live. I should be creeped out by this, but you're dreamy. I don't care. Damn right you don't care. Come with me, babe. I, I just love that part. Like, he's just like... He just... Knows what to do, he knows he can't handle it, and goes over to Sailor Moon. He knows, he knows who she is. I love that bit. Like, he is just so damn smart in this show. It's like, yeah, I know it's you. You're not gonna know it's me. Because Usagi's not that bright, but Mamoru is bright. 
they show in they, they show in this series that he is smart. Not not like in the first series where he had amnesia and crap, but it's like here, he he just sees her and he's like, looks like a saggy. I should look up where she lives. That's not creepy, is it? <laughs> I do love Mamoru in this episode, and I'm looking forward to the next episode where it's all about him, so looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. As for the transformation, because they did it so well, like when she transformed, that she waved her pen up. I was like, "What's gonna happen?" Oh, lightning! It's like bam, lightning, and she's surrounded by it. And it's almost exactly like the first, the first transformation that she did in the first series. But I think it still goes to Mars for the best transformation next to Sailor Moon. I think Mars has the better transformation for one reason. Even though, like, it's perfect how Jupiter was, like, surrounded in lightning and just, like, when she waves up, it's like, boom, lightning. I thought that was perfect. But there's that one part where, like, she's completely transformed and you zoom in at her heels and it's, and it's zooming up and surrounding her like it did in the first show. It is obviously saying, hey, I am CGI, bitch. I'm CGI. No, it's me, Senpai. I know Ami's is the worst because it's just like screaming CGI, CGI, and lame. But there's that one instance in Makoto's transformation where it's just like, boom, CGI. Notice me. Now, here's something I didn't expect. I don't know what to say about it. Actually, I do because like it never happened in the manga. And. I love it. I love how Naoko is just coming out saying, look, I didn't like how the anime came out, that's why I'm doing this. And even though the manga is great, it is not what she wanted. She wanted it to be a little bit longer, but the editor just wanted to go boom, 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 chapter, chapter, chapter. And she just had to rush her endings on each arc. So she is expanding Salem Crystals into what she wants. That's why I'm hoping that the first arc is all those 26 episodes. That's what I'm hoping. So, of, of course, I was happy to hear that, that Jedi's alive, that all four generals are working together, and I love that part where they added, you know, Jedi caressing Mars. If you guys know about Senshi X Shiteno, you know it's Jedi and Mars, Nephrite and Jupiter. Um, Kunzite and Venus, and Zoocyte and Mercury. So I was wondering if they were going to keep the generals alive, because I think in the manga Nephrite was killed by Jupiter, or he died before Jupiter came into the scene. No, I think he died when Jupiter came onto the scene. So I was wondering what was, what was going to happen, which general was going to face Jupiter, was it Nephrite, was it going to be Zoocyte? And I was like, okay, this is Sailor Jupiter's episode. Nephrite's in charge of this mission, what's gonna happen? Are we gonna have a Mars Jedi moment even though Nephrite Jupiter did not, did not happen in the manga? What's going to happen? Is he even going to notice her? Because Senpai, notice her! Okay, that joke's done. Pfft, moving on. And at first I thought it wasn't going to happen. Like, he was trying to corrupt her mind into thinking that love is dead, you're a fool to believe in love. And then when she transforms and shows him her power, he sees her and he's like, I felt this before. And he's just like in awe of her. I'm like, fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! The show has issues with the pacing and animation, but I don't care. I don't care. Is the animation bad? Kinda. Is the pacing bad? Yes. I don't care anymore. I'm getting what I want. I'm getting Senshi Ekshi Tenno. I am happy. I am so happy. If they continue this with Zoicide and Mercury and Kunzide and Venus, God, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I need this. Thank you, Naoko, for giving this to us. My best friend is crying. I cried. I was like, kicking and screaming as I was as I was watching this episode. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I am so happy. Thank you. Thank you for Sailor Moon Crystal. 
I am totally rethinking the anime awards. I know I shouldn't. But god damn it. I want this to be my favorite anime of the year. Because... Because... Fuck all y'all. I, I want it. God damn it. Megan and Ellie are trying to plan in my head that this show has issues. I know it does, but I don't care. I am long gone from reason. Bye bye, people. Bye bye. Farewell. <laughs> There's no hope for me. Especially if Chris Patton voices Diamond. <laughs> Perfect transition to the last topic I am going to talk about. Uh, overall, I loved episode 5. Can't wait for episode 6 when it's an episode about Tuxedo Mask and how awesome he is and how they think he might be a criminal and... I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. I want that scene to happen where Usagi wakes up and she's in Tuxedo Mask's room. I want that. I want it. Giggity giggity giggity. That stuff doesn't happen until Sailor Moon Stars. And if they continue the series of Sailor Moon Stars, Giggity. But another surprise happened this weekend. Uh, apparently Viz Media released, I think, the first four or five episodes of Sailor Moon with the English cast. I will do a review of this separately after I hear Nephrite, Kunzite, Zoosite, and uh, Makoto and Minako. So far I've heard Usagi, Mamoru, uh, Umino, Naru, Usagi's family, Jedi teacher. So yeah, everybody before Sailor Mercury comes onto the scene. I'm gonna do a, a review of that once I hear everybody so I can do my best to worst uh, review. Uh, but I will say this for now. I am trying so hard to like the dub. It is better because it's the right translation, it's the right names, the acting is slightly better, keywords slightly, where how over the top and cheesy the, the old dub was because they were catering to children. This one just needs to step it up a notch with the acting and the effort. Because Stephanie Shea, as Usagi, she needs work. I kind of like her pitch. Her acting is spot on at some scenes. But there are times where her pitch changes from that perfect high voice for Usagi to something deeper and I'm like what happened? What's going on here? I kind of had issues with Stephanie Shea performances. I know Megan loves her but I, I, I'm not, I've never been really impressed with her so I was a little skeptical when I heard Stephanie Shea as Usagi. Needless to say I kind of expected a mediocre performance and that's what I'm getting from her because the pitch is very lacking when she screams, when she's screaming and just like, Aah! all I'm getting from Stephanie Shea is, Aah! that's what I'm getting from a lot of people with the screaming. Like, do you guys not have uh, machines like Dragon Ball Z actors do to kind of help you with screaming? Because that would suck if you do. You need Dragon Ball Z equipment for screaming. But if you do have that equipment, then shame on you because you need to put a lot more effort into your screams. That's all I'm going to say for now, except for the fact that Todd Habercorn as Jedi just makes me look like better, especially when he uses very seductive words and just how evil he is. I'm just like, take me, Jedi. Jedi's perfect. Jedi is so freaking perfect. So, Todd Habercorn, so far. You are the best actor from Sailor Moon Redub. Congratulations. Wow. Your acting for Jedi is wow. I'm impressed, sir. But that's all I'm going to say. If the other actors are okay with their performances, I am very unfortunate to announce my worst character. I'm not going to say it until I hear Makoto and Minako and the rest of the crew first. But if they do okay, then 
I am very sad for my worst choice. Um, but overall, the just watch it on Hulu. Uh, first four episodes are up for the Sailor Moon redub, so you have to see it for yourself. I'm not impressed so far, except for Todd Harpercorn. You just have to see it for yourself. Coming up soon will be Top 32 Sexy Men and Women of Anime, the Anime America Double Dare. Uh, I'm going to be designing some posters for a store that we're trying to set up. I just want to know, guys, for serious re reasons, are you guys interested in buying posters from us? If we do a Kickstarter, posters will be an incentive, and they're all drawn by me. Uh, but I'm also interested if you are uh, interested in, in us opening a new store outside of Cafe Press, because Cafe Press is just not working for us. They don't allow us to do fan art, you know, stuff that you'll really buy instead of, like, generic designs that we usually do, but you guys aren't interested in that. Um, but we are going to try to do a poster set to start with, so let me know if you guys are interested. I really want to make Anime America a lot better with better equipment, better computers, better camera. I want to take Anime America up to the next level, but we kind of need help with that. So just leave us comments down below what you thought of Sailor Moon Crystal Episode 5, what you thought of Sailor Moon's dubbing on Hulu, and if you guys are interested in us opening a store, because we could really use the help in getting Anime America much, much higher off the ground now that we're gearing towards 50,000 subscribers. I'm going to announce this in, a, in another video, but I swear to you, if we make 100,000 subscribers, I'm saying this now, if we make it up to 100,000 subscribers, I, Robin Barry Cotter, I use my Mary name, of Anime America, will rewatch every episode of Clanod and do a review for you guys. Your move. I'm serious. If we get up to 100,000 subscribers, I will make a Clonod review. I will rewatch those episodes. I will try to read the light novels. Keyword try because I have no time to read. Ellie's the reader in our group. She reads all the manga and I watch all the stuff. And I edit a lot. And I draw a lot. So I really have no time to read. But I will try for Clonod. If we make it up to 100,000 subscribers, I will rewatch all the episodes. I will try to find that light novel. And I will do a review of Clonod. I hate it. I don't like Clanad, but if we get to 100,000 subscribers, I will make you that damn video. So let me know what you think about that and get us up to 100,000 subscribers. And stay tuned, Anime America! Notice me, senpai.